All right, well, I guess you're tuning into this video because you got a smart car that's smoking. Well, this one was smoking like a mosquito fogger. It was really bad. Um, let me take, give you a little history on this car first before we go into the actual what you do to fix it, how do you, how do you uh, diagnose it, so that you know that you're going after something. Because it's not easy to fix, but at least you know what's wrong. So this car, I bought it. The engine was half out, laying on the ground, still half hooked up. Um, the guy put a remand head on it and new timing chain and gears and all that stuff. He spent a fortune, got in over his head, bailed. I bought the car for almost nothing, okay? So I start looking at what he did and bring the camera around here and show the top of this head or this block. This is what I found. I could see that he had put some some kind of sealer on where the head gasket goes, and then he put a head gasket on it, and I'm like, well, I gotta check all his work. So I'll come to find out that and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. There's there's a head bolt, and there's a head bolt. And what's wrong with that picture? Somehow he broke the head bolt. There's only seven head bolts. He tried to drill it out screwed it up now the block is screwed because look at that you can't do nothing with that so i had another engine guy claimed it too only had a blown head gasket well it had a smoked rod look at how black that thing is compared to one of the other rods in the same engine you can see the difference this thing was cooked so anyway Okay, so um, this block is junk, so I thought oh, I'll take that block and take this internal rotating assembly, the piston, rod, and crank, put it in the other motor, and I'm good to go. So I did that. Everything's good. I got compression. I got everything nice. The reman head worked out good, all that, yada, yada. Start up, and it smokes like crazy. And that's one of the problems when you buy it, you never heard it run, you don't know, you couldn't diagnose it yourself. So I'm like, I put new rings in it. I'm like, did I do something wrong? And, you know, I've done rings in cars hundreds of times. It's no big deal. Um, the bores were good. I honed them out real nice, deglazed them. It was perfect. So I'm like, well, what the hell? Where can oil come from? There's only a few places. I mean, it's either piston rings, valve seals, or PCV. So I thought, let's check the PCB first. That's, that's a very easy check. Here's what you do. You come in, this is the intake manifold. I got one, I took one off. So it would just be easier to show you what you gotta do. This is how it kinda, it sits in a car like this. Okay, basically something like that. Okay, and it totally covers the PCB valve. So the only way you can get to the PCB valve is to remove the intake manifold, or at least lift it out of the way. You gotta unbolt it and lift it out of the way. And the only way you can do that is by lowering the engine. And this bolt here, I believe it's trapped by the alternator. I don't know, because I took the alternator out when I was doing other things, so don't quote me on that, but I think you gotta take the alternator and move it out of the way to get to this one bolt here. But before you do any of that, before you do any of that, we're gonna do a little quick check, easy, takes five minutes. I was I was actually amazed. Okay, this thing smoked like you, I could fill this garage up with smoke in 30 seconds, 15 seconds. I mean, like London fog smoke. This port right here is the port where your PCV valve hooks up to, like that. And it goes up to that grommet right there, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna get under your car Reach up in there, it's hard to get to. Unplug the PCB valve and just find some kind of cap or a hose with a bolt in it or something. Plug it off and then start the car back up and see if your smoke goes away. I was amazed. Within 15 or 20 seconds of doing that, the car didn't smoke at all anymore. It was totally clear. It was beautiful. I'm like, okay, I know what my problem is. PCV system, for whatever reason, it's sucking oil like a pig. So, I ordered a new PCV valve, 
make sure when you order one that you order a genuine smart car. Because they, they have aftermarket ones that are like eight, nine, ten bucks. This was $29. But the reason you want to go with this one is because A, it's a bitch to get to, and if you have to do it a second time, you're not going to be happy. B, they may have a different flow rate. And if you have a different flow rate of air going through this PCV, it can affect your whole drivability. It can cause all kinds of different problems. And it's not worth saving 15 bucks to have to do it twice. And then you're gonna buy a new one, a smart one anyway, the second time. So you're even farther behind. But <coughs> that's basically what you gotta do. Just unhook it, put a cap on it, start it up. And if your smoke's gone, you got your smoking gun, sort of say. This is the this is the actual piece that holds the PCV valve. And a funny thing, on both of these engines, this one and that one, when I pulled these off, there was a little plastic pin. This little plastic pin was laying right down in here, just laying down in there, just like that, when I took the cover off. That's part of the PCV valve. Now, if you're just pulling the intake back on a switch to PCV out, I don't think this is gonna hurt anything. It'll lay there until the cows come home. I mean, it's, I don't think it's worth trying to peel this thing off and have to re-glue it and all that. I don't think that's worth it. It's up to you if, you, if you're a perfectionist, yeah, take it off, get your little pin out of there and get your new PCV and put everything back together. But I just wanted to, Kind of give you a quick what happened to me, you know, and just unhooking that. Now, don't don't drive the car um, forever without the PCV system because you're going to get in all kinds of other problems. You're going to have moisture in your coil, and and the drive billy won't be right because you don't have the right amount of airflow going through there, and you'll just come into a lot of problems. So just uh, just a quick video on what I found. So this guy, I'd be, will, be willing to bet that it never had a blown head gasket. I'd be willing to bet that it was always the PCV valve and he just thought it was a blown head gasket. And look at the look at the mess he got himself into. He could have just put a PCV valve in a $30 PCV valve and been motoring down the highway because these are pretty good engines. And uh, yeah, do they blow head gaskets? Yeah, I've seen them blown before, but usually because they overheat them. But this guy, thought because it was blowing so much smoke it has to be a head gasket just made the assumption rather than doing that quick little test of unplugging that to see if the smoke goes away so there it is i hope that uh i hope that helps you out um i'm just trying to get this one back together this one also had another problem it had a uh, bad uh tensioner i don't know if the guy did something wrong it was brand new but it didn't work right it had chain noise so that's why that's all apart and I'm just waiting for parts. So there you go. Good luck. I hope uh, if you're if you're really lucky, it is a PCV valve. And you don't have to pull the head. And you don't have to do the timing chains. You don't have to do all the other bullshit. You just slip a new one in and you're done. So have a great day. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.